all at this point, what you have is you're playing tight to the vest. You should be making enough to cover your overhead and limp well. But when you find an edge or, you know, like an arb or a quasi arb, this is not something that you like stumble across randomly. This is something that is the result of you actively looking for things, right? Actively looking for inefficiencies and one-off situations that are weird. That's what this is, right? That's what we're going to talk about now. So inefficiencies in individual stocks. Trading volatility on single names requires a lot more attention than trading it on ETFs. Um, the risk premiums can be a little more or a little less pronounced on average because there's not that correlation risk, but they can have situations where there's just like crazy amounts of fear, greed, and overall irrationality that skews the option prices, sometimes leading to massive inefficiencies. Think meme stocks, IPOs, bankruptcy rumors, rapidly growing industries, all of these things can lead to irrational buying behavior in the market, drive up option prices, and create really interesting selling opportunities. For these types of trades, I call it distressed volatility trading, which is one of the types of unique stock opportunities. Uh, basically, what we're doing is we're looking for, and this is what I'm going to teach you guys uh, uh, for this part of the pyramid. Um, of course, just like the other ones, there's other things you can do. But um, this is where we look for this massive shift from what is typical, right? This massive change. It's usually driven by some sort of unexpected news, right? Sometimes what we'll see is actually the entire term structure will become dramatically elevated. And even though the stock might move a lot in the short term, the market will be implying this crazy level of movement for a very long time, almost indefinitely. And in most cases, this isn't what actually ends up happening. And the market realizes this after maybe a week or two. So what happens is these really far dated options, bad thing happens, option prices shoot up, market freaks out, market calms down, option prices come back down. We usually will see something like that. And we want to catch it right before market realizes and, and then try to uh, trade that change in implied vol back down where, where implied volatility comes back down. Um, if you need a uh, you know review of like what Vega is, uh, throughout this document, I'm linking a whole bunch of little lessons and stuff uh, that you can use. All right. So how to find these distressed volatility trades? Pretty similar to all the other ones, except with one extra step, right? We scan, then we have to find the reason. This is extremely important. And one of the more challenging parts is we need to understand why volatility is elevated. What is the catalyst causing this major change? If we cannot understand the catalyst, we cannot take the trade because maybe there is more information to come out that could cause things to move even more. And that's going to hurt. Right? It could be literally insider trading for all we know. Once we know why it's inflated, we review the key metrics and then we sell longer dated straddles, 90 to 365 days. The scan that you're going to use is called the most inflated premium scan. It's another pre-built one. This is one that I use all the time. And it will show you a list of all the ones that are pretty good uh, candidates. Right, These all have abnormal volatility levels right now that we can be trading. Right? So finding the reason why vol is high, uh, this is pretty much like looking at the news. Um, one thing we can do is look for like where there was like a big change in price and try to find news around that time. That might be what caused it. Um, outside of the terminal, right, on this company news, company and news page, you can also check Google, the company's press releases, and places like Reddit. All right, so once we know what's causing the vol, right, uh, we want to analyze the IV changes and pick the expiration that we trade, right? This is the next step. So let's just see here. We basically want to look at two things, right? We go to this term structure page, and this is basically where we're going to be hanging out for this analysis. The first thing here is this term structure graph, which shows us what was the IV for expirations one month ago, and what's the IV now for the different expirations, right? So this one, for example, on Sunrun, you can see that like, there's a huge change in the front, but there's actually this pretty big change in the back too, right? 90 day and like this, uh, you know, way out here as well, 360 day. And what this basically shows us is like the whole term structure did become more elevated over the last month and that the level of vol here is getting pretty high. Uh, remember, you can like change the implied vol annualized to like the, um, uh, the daily moves if you want to look at it that way. It's actually a pretty useful way to look at it. Um, but, but just looking at the IV is actually totally fine too. 
right? So we can see here, okay, like uh, the 90 day got really elevated. This is also moved up a little bit. Given the level though, already, it's like this had a relatively smaller change compared to this. So this 90 days looking kind of juicy. Um, 90 to like 120 is probably what I'd look at for this. And then I just want to, the second graph here, the Volcone, allows us to see where the IV for different expirations is relative to where it's been in the past. Think of it like an IV rank for all the expirations that you can visualize and have a bit more data. Uh, so for example, like this top blue line is the Q3 line. It's the 75th percentile. The green line is the current and the red is the max. And we can see that like for this ticker, it's all at the max, right? Remember, this is just us doing a hypothetical here together. This is, by the time you see this, there's definitely, this is not a trade to take, right? Um, I'm teaching you how to do it for your own analysis. Right, so all of a sudden, like, we're like, okay, cool. Vol got really elevated over the last month and it's pushing the highest we've ever seen it for this ticker. We should have done our research to understand why it's causing it. And what we can look to do now is trade this really long dated vol, right? So that's our, our next step here is we would come in. On this, we're looking at like the 120 DTE. We sell an at the money straddle. And remember, this ticker is trading at like 10 bucks and this straddle is going for almost $5, right? You, you notice like, this is a trade that's based on the implied volatility changing, not how much it moves in the short term. And that's why like the, the straddle is so wide because today's move doesn't really impact the price that much. It's more so just about does the IV change? These are also trades we're going to Delta hedge. So keep that in mind. And um, that's it. That is the three strategies, everyone. ETFs, events, distressed volatility. In order of complexity and potential returns. And remember, get the lights on, get a decent business running, and then try to make that as streamlined as possible. And from there, spend the rest of your time looking for these really unique opportunities. Like that's, that's what the funnest part of trading is. It can have the highest returns, but you need to be making money. You can't just have your cash sitting idle 24 seven while you try to figure these out. Plus, by doing these ETF trades and these earnings trades, you will learn a lot about how to execute trades and manage positions. Like you don't want to find something great and then like screw up your execution. Like you need to be trading. You need to be well-versed in what's going on. So don't neglect the lower stuff on the pyramid. It's like a requirement to be a part of PA is to be trading uh, risk premium. Cool. Let's talk about the last part here, which is trade management. Thank you for sticking with me this far, everyone. I know I'm at 35 minutes right now. I need water, so we're gonna power through this, but uh, we're almost there, everyone. Thanks for sticking around.